The incredible zoom on the Nikon P950 is certainly its standout feature, but it's more than meets the eye. The zoom actually is pretty complex, and I'm gonna give you some tips, suggestions, and hints on how to maximize the potential of the zoom to get the most out of the camera. It really will be a feather in your cap to learn how to use that zoom. The P950's lens goes from 24 millimeters all the way up to 2,000 millimeters. It's an incredible range. Just understand in this camera, the zoom is completely electronic. There's no ring in front to turn to manually control your zoom like in other mirrorless lenses. So you're gonna completely rely on electronics and certain preset speeds. At the widest, the lens is an f2.8, but when you get all the way zoomed in, the aperture quickly drops to f6.5. That coupled with the minimal light gathering ability of the very small sensor means you really wanna be careful zooming in too tight in very low light situations. And I know it's tempting when you first get a camera with this zoom to always zoom in to the maximum reach. It's like a new toy, but it's not always a good thing to do because when you zoom in that long, a lot of times you're gonna get unwanted atmospheric compression effects that look kind of ugly and heat waves. So when you get it out of your system, you'll realize that you don't always have to zoom in to the full 2000 millimeters. There's two ways to zoom. The rocker switch is pressure sensitive. So when you press it slow, it zooms in slow and you press it faster, it zooms in faster. Now there's a time and a place where you may want to slow zoom for a cinematic effect and you may want a faster zoom to zoom up quickly if you find a lion or a tiger. But let me just give you an idea of exactly what the differences are in zoom speeds from full wide to full zoom, this is at the slow speed and it takes about 14 and a half seconds. We'll repeat the test now by pressing the rocker harder to get the fast zoom speed and you can see the difference in how long it takes to go from wide to full and you'll see it's about eight and a half seconds. So it's considerably quicker when you apply more pressure to that rocker. Note that the side zoom switch is not pressure sensitive. However, in the menu, you can assign the zoom speed either to low, medium, or high. So there's actually three speeds in the side menu. Now here is an example of the slow zoom speed. And when might you use this? Really when you're shooting video and you wanna create a more dramatic effect, shooting video and zooming in really quick tends to make the video shaky and really smacks of being amateur-y. This sort of builds up the suspense as you go from wide to zoom, and you really can appreciate the tremendous reach this camera has. Look at this, really zooming in on this statue's head, and it took 30 seconds to go from wide to full. But let's face it, you're not gonna wanna shoot store windows with this camera, you're gonna wanna shoot some wildlife. It's not so easy finding wildlife in the city. It's not always so black and white like this cute dog, but all puns aside, let's take a look now at the medium speed and see how that compares. And I'll just tell you, it takes about 15 seconds, so about twice as fast as the slow speed. And the fast speed, is about twice as fast as the medium speed, around seven seconds. So you have a wide range of options. Now, when you go into the menu, there's something called start up zoom position, and you have a whole range of options from which to choose. Now, what that's gonna mean is when you turn the camera on, it will immediately snap into the position that you designate. So if you find yourself not using wide angle that much, for example, in this case, I chose 135 millimeters, it snaps right to that position when you turn the camera on. The next way you can customize the zoom is by a feature called zoom memory, and that gives you a lot of control over the zoom and its focal lengths. You literally check specific focal lengths in the menu that you want the camera to remember. So when you press the zoom rocker switch in the front, the zoom will go to each of the focal lengths that you designated. This is a useful feature if you find yourself in a specific situation or situations where you know you're gonna need a specific focal length and you don't wanna waste time for the zoom to get there. It'll get there in a hurry. Maybe if you're in a work environment or whatever you're doing. So for example, if you just want the 2000 millimeter zoom, uncheck all the other focal lengths. And when you hit the zoom rocker switch, the camera will quickly go to 2000 millimeters 
and you don't even have to keep your finger on the switch. Just be advised, you won't be able to go to any other focal length. You're only limited to the focal length that you checked. It's kind of cool as it gives you a degree of precision that you wouldn't normally expect from a point and shoot. As an example, you may want to use that feature if you're doing astrophotography or shooting the moon where you know you're only going to use the 2000 millimeter focal length. Now, there is an extra mode in this camera that's specifically called moon mode, which I'll discuss briefly. I go into that in some other tutorial videos. But the moon mode also helps you save some time while zooming. So first you have to go into that moon icon on the top dial and it sets up the camera for autofocus and turns off the flash and actually sets up a self timer so that when you press the shutter button, you're not shaking the camera. So it's smart that way. But also when you press the OK button in the middle of the back ring, what it will do is immediately zoom in the camera to 1000 millimeters, as you could see. There's a bird mode which does the same thing, except it presets it to 500 millimeters when you press the OK button. Take a look at the top of the LCD and you see the zoom range displaying as you zoom in tighter. It's very clear and you know exactly where you are until you hit the record button if you're shooting video and for some reason it disappears. Not sure why Nikon did that. They did that both on the 950 and P1000. Now, if you're using the camera for wildlife and birding, you certainly want to have the camera on a tripod. As you know, most wildlife photographers have a sturdy tripod in order to get those shots, especially when you're zooming in tight like that. And if you buy a cheap tripod on Amazon, it may not do the trick because when you're at an extreme zoom range, you're going to even see shakes because even a slight amount of wind can ruin your shot. Here's an example. This is a 2000 millimeters and it's a breezy day, but you could see even on a tripod, you're getting a lot of distortion and shakiness and it doesn't look great. If you're not on a tripod, you want to make sure you've got your image stabilization on. It's called vibration reduction and there's normal, active and framing first, which isn't as strong as normal and active. When you're really zoomed in tight on something, it's very common to lose your place where you're just so tight, you don't know where you are. Pressing the snap back button in the front will bring the camera back to a wider angle so you can see where you are. And then when you release the button, it'll zoom back in again. Keep the button pressed to zoom the camera back out releasing it zooms it right back in it's very helpful so if 2000 millimeter equivalent is not enough there is a digital zoom i normally keep it off but i've gotten requests to see what it looks like so let me just briefly show you what digital zoom looks like on this camera first i'm going to show you what the full optical zoom looks like here's a picture taken at 2000 millimeter equivalent now we're going to engage the digital zoom and you can see on top that the blue bar shows 1.6, 1.82. When the bar is blue, the camera thinks that the picture might be okay. And you can take a look and see it's not terribly degraded. But when the bar goes yellow, the camera's telling you hey, it may not look so great. Here it is at 4,800, that's 2.4 times. Here it is at 6,400. And at full digital, 8,000 millimeters, it's a messy blur, but hey, if you're into messy blurs, you've got it. But again, I think 2000 millimeters should be enough. I mean, it is really tight. A thing to note about the zoom rocker switch when viewing your photos back in the playback mode, moving the switch to the right will enable you to zoom all the way up on your photo. Moving it to the left will zoom back and continuing to move it to the left will give you a wider and wider view, show more and more photos and finally an index view of the calendar. When watching back a video, the zoom switch will adjust the volume control as you can see on the lower right. Speaking of volume, when shooting video, if you're zooming, you will be able to hear the motor in a quiet room. This seems to be more of a function of the P950 than the P1000. For some reason, you hear it on the P950. But overall though, the zoom really is an incredible thing on this camera. I mean, even though there's a small sensor, when you're fully zoomed in, it's a way to really give you that background blur that you'd receive on a full frame camera. The P950 and the P1000 have a remarkable zoom range from full wide to full 
2000 millimeters on the P950, you really will be over the moon with this camera if you know how to use the zoom properly. I hope this helped you. Please like and subscribe and please watch more of our tutorial videos.